Welcome to Cool Explorations. October 21st, 2019 will remain a day of disappointment remembered by Western Canadians for a long time. Sentiments about the Liberal minority victory in the 2019 election have not been kept quiet in the West. Eastern Canadian sources have stated that they are not hearing very much about this in the news. It is just brief mentions here and there. The same Canadian sources from the East have all stated that they really are not sure as to the details surrounding the Western Canadian separation, or Wexit, talks. Many in the East actually support the Western Canadians in their plight, realizing that they are largely ignored by Parliament but just don't understand the issues being faced by their Western neighbors. As the news, like the Liberals, tend to ignore these issues. Those who have lived in both the Maritimes and the West state not being able to fully grasp the Western struggles without having lived in the West. If Eastern Canadians are starting to say this, those from Ontario, the Maritimes, and Quebec, and those who have lived in both the Maritimes and the West, then surely the Right Honourable Prime Minister Trudeau should be taking notice of this lack of understanding and division. He should be trying to bridge the gap and help Canadians unify and see the issues facing all parts of Canada, correct? One would think, right? Originally this article was actually going to be a part of an article I'm working on about Wexit and Canada's feelings towards this movement. But after emailing the Prime Minister's office for comment on this movement, I was directed to the press conference held on October 23rd by Brooke Simpson, a staff member. She claims that this press conference covered all the questions that I had about Trudeau's thoughts on Western separation. Having heard this, and having listened to Trudeau's speech previously, I could not remember Trudeau covering much about the Wexit movement himself, and certainly not in relation to the questions I was inquiring about, willing to admit that maybe something was missed. The press conference was turned on and listening ears hooked up. Still, after 30 minutes of my time wasted again, no questions answered about the Wexit or separation movements itself, a couple questions asked, but no true answers given. Like a child playing hide-and-seek, the answers were dodged. If Trudeau and the Liberals ignored the separation questions, what did the Prime Minister have to say about about the Western portion of Canada? To lighten the mood, a favourite quote from this press conference came from Trudeau himself. I will be saying more about this as my thinking evolves. To evolve, there had to be a lack of knowledge or error in thinking in regards to an issue, as well as the acknowledgement that thinking had to be done in the first place, something many Westerners find it hard to believe. But let us give the Prime Minister the benefit of the doubt and admit that the guy can think. Every human has a brain and is able to think. Differing thoughts are not necessarily a bad thing unless this differing of opinions and train of thoughts are detrimental to the rest of Canada. That brings up the question, what does the Prime Minister actually think about the rest of Canada? In Prime Minister Trudeau's press conference on the 23rd, he does shed some light on this, although reading between the lines may be the best source of his true feelings, but it is not the most accurate. As with most politicians, their true feelings are rarely special. Trudeau states, that the Liberal Party made the decision to move forward with the pipeline as it is in the best interest of all Canadians. Environment and economy must go together. Where was this Canada's best interest in the last term when the pipeline was bought and then scrapped after a tiny percentage of Canadians opposed a pipeline going through? BC. This is a question the prairie dwellers want answered. What does he have to say about this question? Trudeau states that Liberals have endeavoured to support and assist all Canadians, but fails to explain the measures his party has actually taken. This bears further study. Listen to his next statement that too long we, Canadians, have been selling our resources to the US at a discount, which he says does not serve everyone's purpose, or meet any needs for that matter. Truer words, my friends, truer words. He goes on to say that getting our natural resources and products to the markets other than the U.S. is and remains a priority, which then makes one wonder what his American backers, as stated in the Over a Barrel documentary, think of all this. Guess what? 
From what I hear from the West, they don't care what these backers have to say. They are just annoyed that American interference took place to prop Trudeau into position for a second term. Trudeau continues to ignore this accusation. He claims that he has measures in place to allow the pipeline project to move forward in a safe and secure way, still working with Aboriginal and environmentalists. And there you have it. Aboriginal environmentalist opinions matter more than that of the majority of the West. Not to take away from the importance of Aboriginal cultures in Canada, but the Constitution is based on freedom and equality in today's time, so should not all opinions be taken into account. A good point was brought forward by Trudeau in his press conference, however, just not in the way he would prefer. He admits that people in Alberta and Saskatchewan are struggling due to economic reasons. How true! But our Prime Minister fails to take ownership of the situation, nor to admit that Liberal policies are to blame for this demise. Kind of like how he avoids telling Canadians why our nation has been forced to sell our oil at rock-bottom prices to the U.S. for them to flip for premium prices. In addition, questions posed in regards to this issue, Trudeau again dodges the real issue. He says that the people of Alberta and Saskatchewan have been suffering due to the circumstances beyond their control. Another statement of truth from Trudeau, but this fails to address the issue being pointed out, and yet professionally avoided, like a dodgeball game. Who is at fault for these circumstances? If you watched the press conference, you were looking at the guilty man and his party, the Liberals. Prime Minister Trudeau has claimed that he endeavours, and that he has done so in the past, to listen to the concerns of Alberta and Saskatchewan and admits that he will have to do more listening. He purchased a pipeline to ensure getting goods to the market, but instead of purchasing the pipeline and continuing its constructions, he let the idea be the carrot that he dangles over the Western Canadian heads. The Western Canadians have declared that both of these claims by Trudeau Liberals are false, hence the heavy Conservative voting results in the 2019 election. They feel that their voices have not been heard, and that the aforementioned pipeline failure is a big part of that. People living in North Burnaby have confirmed reports of a pipeline boring beginning in the North Burnaby area. But this is a small gesture for the Western anger, although it is a start. He is further claimed to have visited Alberta and Saskatchewan during his election campaign and the previous years to listen to concerns. The truth that Westerners saw during his four years in Parliament and his campaign trail is that the voices of the West do not matter. His claims that he has visited Alberta and Saskatchewan may be true, but their visits were few and far between, and the West was largely ignored in his political campaign. His choice was to put his focus on the province of Quebec and the parts of Ontario he felt were his strongest supporters. This is the reason why Alberta and Saskatchewan governments and citizens chose to keep the Liberal Party from getting even one seat in their provinces, which is seen by Canada as a whole, but the East has chosen comments of hate rather than understanding, comments calling the West whiners and saying that they are ungrateful. These comments coming from the very provinces who have benefited most from the West, Quebec and Ontario, Comments like these further the divide and are not helpful in finding a resolution. A final thought comes from the comment Trudeau made that does not just pertain to the West, but still shows where the West fits into the scheme of things with the Liberal Party. He states that no relationship is more important to him and the Liberals than that with the Indigenous people of Canada. They are truly an important part of this country and its amazing heritage. But... Should not all people of the country be equally important in our Prime Minister's eyes? From this, we can then generate a hierarchy of Canadian citizens in Trudeau and the Liberals' minds, based upon a collection of statements they have made while in term, too many to possibly cover. We have Trudeau, always most important in Trudeau's mind, Indigenous people of Canada, Quebec, the rest of the Francophones, the rest of Eastern Canada, immigrants and LGBT. LGQBT, basically, they have the same level in Trudeau's minds, tools to be used as pawns for his party, women, whom he also views as pawns, Western Canada, about whom he pretends to listen to, 
The order will change, of course, depending on whom he is speaking to or needs most at that particular moment in time. But the West always seems to remain at the bottom. I will leave you all with a fresh reminder from Trudeau's own words in, about the West. I will be saying more about this as my thinking evolves. Settle in for a long ride, folks. Trudeau is thinking this could take a while. Remember to like and subscribe.